In this course, we are going to cover these topics. Antenna impedance. Antenna impedance relates the voltage to the current at the input to the antenna. This is extremely important as we will see. Let's say an antenna has an impedance of 50 ohms. This means that if a sinusoidal voltage is applied at the antenna terminals with an amplitude of 1 volt, then the current will have an amplitude of 1 by 50 is equal to 0 0.02 amperes. Since the impedance is a real number, the voltage is in phase with the current. Alternatively, suppose the impedance is given by a complex number, say Z is equal to 50 plus J into 50 ohms. Note that J is the square root of minus 1. Imaginary numbers are there to give phase information. If the impedance is entirely real, that is Z is equal to 50 plus J into 0, then the voltage and current are exactly in same time phase. If the impedance is entirely imaginary, let's say Z is equal to 0 plus J into 50, then the voltage leaves the current by 90 degrees in phase. If Z is equal to 50 plus J into 50, then the impedance has a magnitude equal to root of 50 square plus 50 square is equal to 70.7. The phase will be equal to this means the phase of the current will lag the voltage by 45 degrees. That is, the current waveform is delayed relative to the voltage waveform. To spell it out, if the voltage with frequency at the antenna terminals is given by, the electric current will then be equal to. Hence, antenna impedance is a simple concept. Impedance relates the voltage and current at the input to the antenna. The real part of the antenna impedance represents power that is either radiated away or absorbed within the antenna. The imaginary part of the impedance represents power that is stored in the near field of the antenna. This is non-radiated power. An antenna with a real input impedance, zero imaginary part, is said to be resonant. Note that the impedance of an antenna will vary with frequency. Third. Return loss. The return loss is another way of expressing mismatch. It is a logarithmic ratio measured in decibels that compares the power reflected by the antenna to the power that is fed into the antenna from the transmission line. The relationship between SWR and return loss. Return loss is equal to 20 log 10 into SWR divided by SWR minus 1. Fourth, VSWR. We see that an antenna's impedance is important for minimizing impedance mismatch loss. A poorly matched antenna will not radiate power. This can be somewhat alleviated via impedance matching, although this doesn't always work over a sufficient bandwidth. A common measure of how well matched the antenna is to transmission line or receiver is known as the voltage standing wave ratio. VSWR VSWR is a real number that is always greater than or equal to 1. A VSWR of 1 indicates no mismatch loss. The antenna is perfectly matched to the TX line. Higher values of VSWR indicate more mismatch loss. As an example of common VSWR values, a VSWR of 3.0 indicates about 75% of the power is delivered to the antenna, that is 1.25 decibel of mismatch loss. A VSWR of 7.0 indicates 44% of the power is delivered to the antenna, that is 3.6 decibel of mismatch loss. A VSWR of 6 or more is pretty higher and will generally need to be improved. The parameter VSWR sounds like an overly complicated concept. However, power reflected by an antenna on a transmission line interferes with the forward traveling power and this creates a standing voltage wave, which can be numerically evaluated by the quantity voltage standing wave ratio, VSWR. In the next section on antenna basics, we look at a very important antenna parameters known as bandwidth. 
The bandwidth of the antenna refers to the range of frequencies over which the antenna can operate correctly. The antenna's bandwidth is the number of hertz for which the antenna will exhibit an SWR less than 2 is to 1. The bandwidth can also be described in terms of percentage of the center frequency of the band. BW is equal to 100 into FH minus FL divided by FC. Where FH is the highest frequency in the band, FL is the lowest frequency in the band, and FC is the center frequency in the band. In this way, bandwidth is constant relative to frequency. If bandwidth was expressed in absolute units of frequency, it would be different depending upon the center frequency. Different types of antennas have different bandwidth limitations. Now let us see the term directivity and gain. Directivity is the ability of an antenna to focus energy in a particular direction when transmitting or to receiving energy better from a particular direction when receiving. In a static situation, it is possible to use the antenna directivity to concentrate the radiation beam in the wanted direction. However, in a dynamic system where the transceiver is not fixed, the antenna should radiate equally in all directions. And this is known as an omnidirectional antenna. Gain is not a quantity which can be defined in terms of a physical quantity such as the watt or the ohm. But it is a dimensionless ratio. Gain is given in reference to a standard antenna. The two most common reference antenna are the isotropic antenna and the resonant half-wave dipole antenna. The isotropic antenna radiates equally well in all directions. Real isotropic antennas do not exist, but they provide useful and simple theoretical antenna patterns with which to compare real antennas. Any real antenna will radiate more energy in some directions than in others. Since it cannot create energy, the total power radiated is the same as an isotropic antenna, so in other directions it must radiate less energy. The gain of an antenna in a given direction is the amount of energy radiated in that direction compared to the energy an isotropic antenna would radiate in the same direction when driven with the same input power. Usually we are only interested in the maximum gain, which is the gain in the direction in which the antenna is radiating most of the power. An antenna gain of 3 dB compared to an isotropic antenna would be written as 3 dBi. The resonant half-wave dipole can be a useful standard for comparing to each other antennas at one frequency over a very narrow band of frequencies. To compare the dipole to an antenna over a range of frequency requires number of dipole of different lengths. An antenna gain of 3 dB compared to a dipole antenna would be written as 3 dBd. The method of measuring gain by comparing the antenna under test against a known standard antenna which has a calibrated gain is technically known as a gain transfer technique. Another method for measuring gain is the three antenna method, where the transmitted and received power at the antenna terminals is measured between three arbitrary antennas at a known fixed distance. Here I conclude this topic. Hope you all understood. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.